I think Japan might be one of those few countries in the world where you can sit and eat Ghana and drink sour cowpies whilst simultaneously watching a man hypnotise a woman into having a seizure on national television in front of a very uh, large man dressed as a woman. Mm. <laughs> mm, the UK has Cadbury's, America has Hershey's and Japan of course has uh, Ghana which is uh, the finest, cheapest chocolate you're going to get uh, for under 100 yen. Um, it's great. I don't know if it's actually got any connection with Ghana or if someone just thought, let's call it Ghana. But uh, really great. And if you come to Japan, definitely buy this stuff. Definitely. Mm. And there's no better way uh, to wash that Ghana down than with a nice can of calpis, uh, sour calpis. Oh. I guess. Uh, any drink uh, that claims to be filtered through vodka and charcoal uh, will to some degree well, taste like calpers. Uh. So I've been in Japan about two months now and I feel like I'm no longer on holiday. I really do live in Japan um, and that's quite weird for me as it's the first time I've ever lived abroad. So one of the things I wanted to talk about was culture shock as it's something that affects a lot of people who live abroad for the first time and it's something that I've had uh, now particularly as I don't speak Japanese um, and it's quite a weird sensation. There are three stages to culture shock. Um, the first is initial euphoria. <laughs> this beer came with a free hand towel. How good is that? <laughs> oh look, there are Buddhas carved in the rocks. Oh my god, that's sushi. <laughs> what are all these colourful things? Whoa, that is a mountain. Oh, a vending machine. <laughs> it's a vending machine. Oh, another vending machine. Just uh, open my uh, bank account. I only got a free, a free towel, a free towel with my bank account. You would not get that in the UK. Yeah, it's a water bill. Oh. The second is irritation and hostility. Literally, I'm running out of room for all these flipping towels. Well, I just got my internet, but I've hit a bit of a snag. Oh yeah. Can't read any of this. Where are the goddamn muffins? Hello, I'm having problems with my internet. Oh, Nihongo Gawa Kanemasen. I don't speak Japanese. For God's sake, why won't this mug just work? English? No? Oh, okay. Yeah, well, I don't need the internet anyway. What are they on about? The third stage is gradual adjustment and I think that's the stage I'm in now. There are days where I feel like I'm in a giant theme park and there are days where I feel like there's a barrier between me and the Japanese people. So at the very least, culture shock is making me, uh, is driving me to learn Japanese um, and pushing me. So in that respect, it's probably a good thing. There's a big theme of convenience in Japan and you're never far away from two things, convenience stores and vending machines. Vending machines sit on pretty much every street corner. In the UK, having a vending machine on every other street just wouldn't work, uh, simply because they'd get smashed up after about 45 minutes. Here in Japan, you can put one in the middle of nowhere, um, and because of the almost non-existent crime rates, um, it's not a problem. Small convenience stores line every other street, um, open 24 hours a day, 11 days a week, 365 days a year and you can do some pretty cool things um, at the convenience store from buying uh, airline tickets to paying your water and electricity bills unless, uh, like me, you can't read your bills so you just put them in this special Japanese cupboard designed to put your bills in because you're not going to pay for something you can't read 
uh, all the way up until you get deported. One of the most convenient tools in Japan uh, is this. It's called a Hanko stamp and basically it's your own personalised stamp which you use to stamp the many hundreds of millions of documents you get on a daily basis. And I'd never heard of it before I came to Japan and there are entire shops dedicated to crafting these personalised stamps um, and selling these cases. Um, and you can get some pretty pimped up uh, stamps made of like gold or silver, depleted uranium little holders for your stamps. It's pretty cool, admittedly. And I like using it because I feel just like a lazy gangster. Because you do get so much paperwork in Japan as well, it's a lot easier than doing your signature over again and again. It's a lot of fun to use. Um, and I just like stamping things just for the fun of it, really. As I mentioned in my uh, last video, my kitchen is quite small um, and to some extent specially designed to make you eat out every other night uh, because in my mind it's too difficult to physically prepare dinner or food in such a small space. But to some degree this kitchen is once again uh, a good example of Japanese innovation and foresight because by having such a small kitchen I eat out every other night and in the process walk to and from restaurants keeping me fit. So to some degree the kitchen is keeping me fit and healthy, although I did just get a car. But one of my favourite uh, places is a chain of sushi restaurants called Kappa Sushi and it's very popular with families and people that just like to stuff their face with uh, raw fish and soy sauce and green tea. Uh, all for a thousand yen, which is eight pounds or twelve dollars. When I first started going I thought, like most things Japanese, it had a real air of convenience about it. After all, your food comes uh, to you on a conveyor belt or you order at a screen and it comes to you on this little this little train um, which is amazing it's honestly the future but now in train form and you wonder why all your food's just not bought to you on a train um, it just makes sense but what I found is it's not just the convenience of it all that's impressive but how it's actually designed to make you eat more uh, than you'd actually want in the first place and maybe it's me just being greedy but uh, Allow me to explain. You'll, you'll go in, sit down, pour your green tea, uh, and then you'll go up to the screen and start ordering uh, what food you want. While you're waiting for five minutes for the train to come past, you'll inevitably take some things off the conveyor belt just to, uh, just to get you started. And when you finally finish those, the train will probably pull up with, uh, with all your food, and off you go again. When it's time for round two, you turn your attention back to the screen uh, go through a few pages and come across something called That's Bonito Concrete Floor And this isn't just any Bonito Concrete Floor, this is the first Bonito Concrete Floor uh, Assuming that there's more than one Bonito being beautiful um, in Spanish, or well, at least I thought it was And when you see something that says Bonito Concrete Floor Which is either a ridiculous mistranslation or just the world's greatest order at a sushi restaurant, you inevitably get it um, and sit there and wait. If you're someone like me who's impatient, you start taking more and more fish off the conveyor belt, so when the concrete floor finally does arrive, uh, and disappointingly appears to be some sort of fish instead of a bag of concrete, you feel a bit disappointed. You know, when, when you order a concrete floor, at the very least you expect a concrete floor. So, you start ordering more fish, um, and so the cycle continues, you order off the screen, while you're waiting, you eat more food off the conveyor belt and when you're finished, the experience culminates with you walking out stuffed full of raw fish and with your monthly bank balance decimated. Well, that's the end of the video. Um, I'll be putting up my next video in a few weeks. I actually spent most of the budget for this video on that shot of the windmills at the start, so here's that shot again. And uh, yeah, any questions, ask away. See you later. There are three stages to culture shock. Um, the first is initial euphoria. What the f*** is that? Shut up. There are three stages. There are three stages to cult... Oh my god, that bird is going to die. Like, not... not there are three stages to culture shock. Uh, 
Oh, this is not happening. Come on, shut up. There are three stages to culture shock. Um, the first is initial euphoria. Oh my god. That bird. What is it doing? Why is it so loud? But the best thing about the 24 hour convenience stores is when you pack your ship 1am, you can go and get some sort of roll and, I'm quite excited about this, fried potatoes with toothpick. I'm excited about this because I've never had the fried potatoes out of a hot cooker thing. They have a really good hot food section and, uh, oh, there we go, let's give it a shot. Mm. I think they might have been out a while. Um, they're pretty bad. But generally, the food is awesome and highly recommend it. Get some hot food from 7 Eleven. Mm. Oh shit. Just dropped a chip in the cooker. I'll do it. Just do something out later. <laughs>